jump. Sirwa is first. A gold medal for Kelsey Sirwa and silver for her teammate, Brittany Phelan. Have you had time to fully appreciate being Olympic champion? Uh, summer was very busy and definitely appreciate it. I've watched our final run from time to time and uh, yeah, it's hard to believe that that's our life, that's our reality, Britt and I. Um, but yeah, something, a moment in time that I'll cherish forever. Britt, you mentioned her and that one-two finish in Pyeongchang. You know, skiing is an individual sport, but you chose to celebrate it as a team thing. Why did you do that and why was it important to do that? Yeah, I say that not only did we celebrate it as a team thing, but we went in there too as, as teammates and friends. Uh, we've kind of have uh, figured out that, you know, strength in numbers and we can figure out twice as much with two brains than just one. <laughs> um, but no, we've always worked together since Britt became a member of the team, uh, I believe in 2015-2016, and uh, have just jived, you know, we're same schedule, same focus, same light uh, and energy that we bring to our sport with a lot of hard work. and. Uh, I think it, may, it has made us both better skiers. Um, not to put too fine a point on it, but you've been Olympic champion, world champion, uh, X Games champion, not to mention Olympic silver medalist uh, a few years back. You've done everything. So the question being, why go back at it? Yeah. Uh you know, I was really having a lot of fun last year and, and, and with Britt um, discovering new strengths about her skiing literally every race. And I felt that, you know, there's still room in the tank for improvement. And Britt did a lot of encouraging to sign me up for another year. Um, but it's also an opportunity. I mean, I love the sport um, and an opportunity for me to maybe give back to the next generation of racers and kind of show them the ropes too. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't. It, it, it's a perfect. It's a perfect final year for me. Perfect final year, and that's. I mean, you you put a, said what I was thinking right there. <laughs> it, it will be a final year. You know, three knee surgeries, uh, all kinds of bumps and bruises. Um, as someone who wants to be a physiotherapist, you know the inherent risk of the sport. How do you how do you reconcile that? To, to keep racing in what is a risky business? Yeah, I, uh, you know, it's, everything worth doing has a little bit of risk to it, otherwise life would be pretty boring, right? So, I mean, we do everything that we can to mitigate those risks, um, but when you're living on the edge in that between like total chaos and total control, like that's when I feel like I'm living the most flying through the air next to people, um, rubbing shoulders, you know, testing your limits. That is the coolest place to be and I hope that I can find something after the sport that gives me those feelings, you know, and um, so, yeah, that's what I live for, that's what I strive for. <laughs> um, so how important is it to you to be part of this Canadian team which has been pioneering in ski cross. It, it actually has paved the way for so many other nations to be great. Mm -hmm. And you're a big part of the story. This is, this is Canada's sport in a lot of ways. It is, it's really cool because since the Olympics in 2010, a Canadian woman has taken home Olympic gold uh, every time, right? First Ashley McIver and then Marielle Thompson and then myself. Um, so we're doing something right in Canada here, for sure, and the men's field just as strong. Brady Lehman winning gold in, in uh, Korea and coming fourth in 2014, you know, and uh, I think one of our strengths as a team is that we do all work together. Um, we watch and ask questions to each other. Uh, we take notes of what other teams are doing, and for sure there's fluctuations, good races, bad races, but I think because there's so much depth in competitors in Canada, um, that the chances of someone getting on the podium keeps our momentum building and, and you know snowballing from event to event. Okay, sir, uh, the uh, scholarship fund uh, and your belief that young women need to stay in school, uh, but they also need to balance that life with a life of sport. What's the idea behind that foundation and that scholarship fund and 
the balance that can exist between sport and education? Mm -hmm. So uh, for me, my parents instilled the value of education. You know, school always came first. And, uh, you know, that taught me a lot about time management and prioritizing while traveling around the country, um, being an athlete as well. Uh, so anyways, I just wanted to give back to my community of Kelowna, BC, because um, they've been so supportive towards my endeavors. And after 2014, I recognized that, uh, I realized that I was finally, I finally had this platform that I could give back in a meaningful way. So created the scholarship fund. Um, we had this huge fundraiser uh, that Raymond James put on and raised over $60,000 just for the fund. Um, so, I mean, we've given away 11 or 12 scholarships, um, bumping up the value, but just to support that next generation of student athletes and realizing that you can do both. You don't have to choose. Kelsey, what has sport meant to your life? Um, sport has provided me an opportunity to create these what seem like outlandish dreams and strive for them and giving me the support system um, to achieve them, essentially. Yeah, very empowering. Um, it's taught me a lot about perseverance, determination, grit, resiliency, um, all these cool adjective words. <laughs> but no, it's, it's really shaped who I am uh, and the person that I'll be moving forwards to. Kelsey, thanks so much for this, and uh, congratulations on your big white life. Thank you. Thanks, Scott.